We're at the Atrium Studio here in Los Angeles. Um, had an opportunity to check out some Telefunken mics. Um, I jumped at that opportunity because uh, uh, those of you that has followed the show, you know what a big fan of Telefunken I am. And every batter's box, somebody mentions a Telefunken mic. I'd like you to meet my friend Chris Baysford over here. Chris has been uh, kind enough to help us out and actually more than help out. He uh, orchestrated this, this um, opportunity for us to compare and contrast the different microphones that uh, Telefunken has, has, has let us borrow. So, Chris, welcome, my friend. Thank you very Good much. Good to see you. Great Thank job today. Couldn't have done for it without you. Chris, uh, the reason that, that I asked Chris is Chris has uh, incredible gifts of hearing, and, and I have so much respect for his work in the past, and uh, uh, I needed some help in, uh, in, in, in figuring out what was what. And then also, it gives us just another perspective. Chris and I don't always uh, agree on everything, so this will give you a little broader perspective. But uh, in terms of the weight, you give both opinions 50-50 here Chris uh, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, about the process I, I know I know you, you uh, Logan kind of helped us out what is Logan's last name I Logan Heftel he's a uh, singer songwriter artist a buddy of mine that uh, we've done some work together great guitar player great writer great singer so um, enjoyed listening to him yeah he's got some great stuff so he's out there what we did is we set up a bunch of different mics um, all the Telefunken stuff is great, but they've got a couple different lines that uh, are different price points, different kind of heritage. They've got some that recreate the old classics that everybody knows, the 47s, the 251s, um, and then they've got the RFT series. So what we wanted to do was set them up and be able to hear the differences, not only between the different series, but also between the different models, the different characters. So we set up all the mics in such a way that the grills and the capsules are as close together as possible so that way we you know you're not hearing too much of a difference between the position of the mics um, but where you can still hear the character difference between the two on the same source so for instance for each guitar pass um, we had three mics depending on what we were uh, testing and it's all capturing the same take so you're not hearing differences between performances you're hearing the same performance uh, the relatively close same positioning um, and then for uh, for mic preamps I had everything going through um, Vintec 473s which is like a Neve 1073 style preamp um, no EQ no compression just uh, into the SSL and then routed into Pro Tools um, everything we recorded at 2448 uh, through the the stock 192s, uh, nothing fancy on that end. The, the the real trick was just you know really getting the mic set up in such a way where the the positioning between them wasn't uh, very apparent because you know some of the grills are you know are large and when you put them side by side the capsules can be uh, not necessarily right up close to each other. So uh, Chris and I trust our hearing enough. We set up a a test that allows us to give you an object, objective opinion about what we're hearing. And then you can form your own opinion too because these uh, tracks are available for you to check it out. So um, without further ado, Will, you want us to just jump right into it? Well, should we do uh, a first take uh, with a yeah. little finger picking part of this song? We'll get Logan to, to do the, the first part here. Here it comes. Would you be more comfortable 
uh, given an opinion on all three at one time. Or let's take them one by one. What one, do you think? one by one. Okay, on the um, of the RFT group, I felt like the AR-51 was, from a mix standpoint, everything I needed to get from it in the mix process was there. Yeah. I felt like like the the high frequency information I might have to add a little more than I would for some of the other mics, and I felt like the mid range was. Um, Satisfying. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And the low end seemed uh, round and, and, and nice to me. I felt like everything that I wanted to hear more of or less of, I could get in the mix process. I, 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 was, I, I, I would use that mic. Well, to not jump through the rest of them, but I think that was probably my favorite. And for the, exactly the same reasons that you mentioned, I felt like um, I don't know, pre mixed isn't the right word, but it almost would probably need the least amount of finagling in a lot of stuff. I felt like it was very balanced, but it was bright enough to cut balanced, through. Balanced, that's the word. Yeah, it's balanced. Right. Let me jump ahead. Mm -hmm. I felt that the, for me personally, um, uh, the only way I can describe the AK-47, which is my favorite of the three, mm -hmm. is classy. I just felt like I was listening to a classy mic. Yeah. Um, I don't know how to describe the, the sonic quality as accurately as I could describe the AR-51, but I felt like the high end had a had a expensive sound to it, and the Absolutely. bottom end was was had I EQ'd the bottom end in or off, I'd just leave it. I'd say, okay, we're done there. I it, felt that was kind of classy. What was your opinion about the 47? I think the 47, the top end that you're talking about on the 47, you know, w or the top end on the f the AR51 would be would I think would be awesome for maybe like something like my J45, which isn't quite as bright. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the AK47 for this particular guitar, the source that's a little bit brighter was, was perfect because I don't think you really need, you didn't really need that all that extended top that the 51 had. Um, but yeah, the classy, expensive, it, this definitely has that sound. The extended it's, it's, top the 47 had. Well, I, I thought the 51 had a, had a kind of an oh, extended top. Yeah, oh, a little okay. bit. I, I mean, it might, maybe it's not the top top, maybe, but it had some articulation with the strings that it was a little... Was all, it was certainly all there. It was sparkly in a, in, a, in a kind of a way, whereas I felt like the 47 was maybe, again, I'm, I don't stay away from smooth, but... Well, let's, let's, let's give an award for the best name for a microphone in the bunch. That would, no, that would no hands contest. down be the Copperhead. <laughs> <laughs> the Copperhead CU-29. And the coolest looking. Coolest looking, yeah, it has yeah. a heft. The, on the Copperhead, um, not looking <laughs> at your notes, in a dense mix, I probably, like if, if I'm doing a song, let's say this was a big rock song that I needed acoustic guitars to kind of fit in, I might, I might have gone for the Copperhead. I felt like the mids were more pronounced in such a way. Again, going to the carvability, I think, I think that Copperhead. Oh, there you go. I didn't see, I didn't see your notes, Dave. <laughs> no, I, I think the mids had a lot more um, girth there to give me what I needed to really make it fit in a, in a more of a dense mix. If, if, if you were selecting a mic for a solo, uh, kind of folk singer songwriter mm -hmm. like like you'd probably choose the 51 i'd probably choose the 47 mm -hmm. if i was picking a microphone to mix in with a rock group i would probably pick the the, the copperhead yeah. i liked i liked the aggressiveness of it yeah i felt that the way it handled the uh expressiveness of the playing i i, I felt like that came through to me a little more so uh i think that i think that would be a good a good mic to use if you were if you were using it within the context of a pretty dense mix. I think you kind of absolutely hundred percent. All right, Logan, let's do the uh, the overdub for the strumming part. Here comes.
Wow, we got our job cut out for us. That was that was pretty close. And uh, when I say pretty close, that's a testament to your old buddy, the AR-51 that you liked from the last group. It, 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 are it. you surprised that it held up to the Diamond Series mics that well? I, I was a little surprised. I've used the AR-51 before for vocals and not having you know, other stuff to compare it to right away. You didn't, it sounded you great. You didn't, in the disclosure form, you never uh -oh, said that. Uh -oh. That's I'm not biased. a disqualification, <laughs> isn't it, Will? The AR-51, here again, sounded mixed ready to me. It sounded like the SM57 version of the condenser world. It just a, a journeyman, just anywhere you throw it, it's gonna be great. Yeah. Um, I felt like for me the the 251 was my overall favorite. Tell me what you think. I thought that I thought that it, um, I I felt like I I I could hear the nuances of 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 Logan's performance. But I started thinking, man, I bet that'd sound good on like some live percussion. I, I, or man, for sure. Like I'd like to hear that as a as as maybe a room mic mm -hmm. on a drum kit or or even overheads. I, think, Over, that, I yeah. think that would sound good on the overheads, too. Do you feel that way, too? Absolutely. It's, it's so weird. 10K on 20 different pieces of, of equipment and plug-ins will give you 10 different sounds. Yeah. And this mic had a very pleasing, usable high end to me. Yeah. That Whew, that's I, a I long think, setup and for I that think sentence. you could probably EQ some more into it if you needed it, and it would take it nicely it with and, and majority it would, of stuff. It would be harsh. Yeah. Chris, I was thinking on the, on the C12, mm -hmm. I got the feeling that Anything where where an emphasized clarity would would add to the performance, add to the listening experience. I felt like that was a great choice for that. Like, like the articulations of of his right hand on the guitar. I felt, excuse me, I felt a little more uh, pleased by those. Yeah. And then also, I felt like like anything that required. Um, a certain distance from this source, like say maybe a live strings or anything like that, I felt that the top end on that particular mic would be just perfect. And, uh, it's a great close mic, mic, but yeah. I also felt like it was it would be good for like room mics or absolutely or, or like you know like if you tried to if you tried to do a, a a live string section in MS mode, I'd choose I'd choose the C12 for my figure eight pattern, mm -hmm. and I'd choose the AR-451 for my cardioid pattern. Yeah, it, absolutely. I, my thought with the C12 was very similar. I, I think I would probably pick that mic over the others in a scenario like you mentioned, like a string session um, where you can get it back a little bit further, get kind of that lifelike mm -hmm. sound. What about an acoustic piano? I thought it would be Ab good. Absolutely. Not a Yamaha, but more like a... Uh, Steinway, Steinway or something like that. For the head absolutely. Of darker hammer. Absolutely. Speaking of MS, what, I'm a huge fan of MS miking. Um, I believe they're now making the AR51, which is also my favorite so far out of all of these, in uh, a stereo capsule that you can actually do MS okay. right, right in the same thing. So you don't have to worry about aligning capsules or whatever. It's That's already really done. Cool. So, very cool. Um, I think that covers that group. Uh, once again, your favorite here again was the was the 51. I think the AR-51, in this, in this application, and again, the application is extremely sp specific. I mean, if this was a different guitar, maybe the C12 would have sounded better, or if it was a different room, maybe, the, in my eyes, the 251 yeah. might have sounded yeah. different or better yeah. or worse or whatever. But um, Well, that's good. The, little yeah. the AR-51 got some love. It's the least expensive of the group, and yeah. to hold its own against uh, some of the most classic microphones ever made. Yeah. That's saying some Absolutely. You know, in terms of, you know, we we have we've kind of delineated some things that we thought other than guitars and vocals that these mics would sound good. What's something that that that, that you, like like you would hear and you'd go, "Oh, AR51, I got better on that's, that's the perfect mic for that." Can you give me one more example? Uh the, I think the, the thing about the AR-51 is I would use it on so many different things. If I had a pair of those, which I'd, I'm probably going to end up getting, I'd I'd go to them for acoustic guitars. I'd go to them for pianos. I would go to them for, for room mics, overheads. I'd probably, I would, if I had a pair of those in my hand today and I was doing a full session, I do a lot of rock stuff, so if I was doing a full rock session, I'd probably put those on the overheads first thing. Let me ask you a question, because yeah. it sounds to me like what you're saying is the, the difference between all the mics we're, we're looking at, the Copperhead, the, the, uh, the AK-47, 
the AR-51, we're talking like the difference is maybe less than seven, eight percent from, from the best to the worst. Yeah. It's probably at, smaller at the, than that, yeah, really. Yeah, at the most. Yeah, at so, the most. So the differences we're hearing might not be enough for you to make a decision flat out based on our description of sound. Price can be a factor sometimes. Mm -hmm. So if uh, we're talking about very minute, small differences, which... Uh, uh, you know, congratulations and kudos to, um, is kudos a real word? <laughs> kudos? Kudos. 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 <laughs> oh. That's something to bear in mind. And, and, and you know, um, Telefunken deserves a lot of credit for spending the time and effort and the extra expense in R&D to, to accomplish a feat like that. I was expecting, yeah. I was expecting some blowing away stuff, some mics to get blown away here. Nothing's blown away. They're within a very, very small range. So Absolutely. it allows you to, to de determine within your budget and framework and needs. Uh, so far, I'm pretty impressed with the selection that, 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 that they're offering to the public. If you've got a limited budget, there's, I mean, you're really not making any sacrifice with these particular mics. Good they, way they, to put it.